Hi everyone, welcome to the American Heritage School Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you and we look forward to hearing all that the college and universities have to share with us this evening. Um, before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items um, to share. First, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. Again, the Q&A button um, will be the great place to submit any questions throughout the presentations. Your camera and microphone is off, um, so you are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you, um, and so uh, no worries there. And then um, if there are any, uh, if you're interested in more sessions, there are plenty more college presentations being offered at this time. Um, so feel free to sign up for um, another session for where you registered for this um, session. And then lastly, this recording will be available a week from today. So all sessions are being recorded and available on the same page where you registered. Um, so I will get out of the way, and without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started with SUNY Cortland. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, we're happy to be here. My name is Alyssa Ackerman, and I am the regional recruiter for SUNY Cortland. Um, SUNY is the State University of New York, so you'll be hearing from quite a few different SUNY schools today, but there are 64 in total is the largest university system in the nation, um, which is pretty cool. The overall size is about 7,000 students. So we've got about 1,200 freshmen that come each fall and 600 transfer students. Our average class size is 23. And then our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. So we do have some larger classes and some um, lecture style halls that will have about 200 students in them. We have those smaller classes and there's always time to meet with your professors. All of our um, classes are taught by a professor, but there are some TAs that will also be a part of your class. Location-wise, we are in upstate New York, so we're about 35 minutes from Syracuse, about 35 minutes from Binghamton, um, kind of right in central New York, which is awesome. We have students from 34 states and 47 countries, uh, and then we are ranked the number one safest campus in the state of New York, which is pretty cool. We do have the blue light system, so at any time, if you need to um, contact our university police department. And so there's just a, a, a button away on all of our lamp posts, um, and they will be with you and right to you within two to three minutes, which is pretty cool. As far as what we're looking for in our freshman class, we're looking for four years of English and four years of history, and then three to four years of math, science, and foreign language. And we can be flexible with those, especially for our out-of-state students. We know that a lot of out-of-state students don't have three years of foreign language, and that's totally fine. Whatever your high school is looking for is what, what we will accept. And then our average GPA is gonna be between an 86 and a 92, and we are test optional. Um, we hope to continue to be test optional for the next year. We are just waiting on SUNY administration um, to let us know if that's what the uh, directive is going to be. Our total build expenses is gonna be pretty similar to all the SUNY schools. What's important to note here, is gonna be that we give all of our out-of-state students a $7,500 award per year. Um, which is pretty cool. We do have a lot of majors um, kind of all over the board and all of these are on our website. Something to know is all the internship opportunities that we have and hands-on experience that we have uh, between the NFL, ESPN, UNICEF, Disney World. Um, there's a lot of hands-on opportunities and student clubs. We have a club for all of our majors as well as really anything you can imagine and new clubs are always coming on campus. Uh, we are a D3 school so we have 25 NCAA varsity teams, as well as club sports and intramurals. Um, and then our Student Life Center is an area that all of our students are in uh, for anything athletic related. Um, and that is my time. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or text me and I'd be happy to help. Hey, sorry. Um, you have a few more minutes left, but we weren't unable to see your slides. Oh, no. Um, we could just see um, just your uh, like we could see your PowerPoint, but we couldn't see it as you were going through it. Hmm. Can you see it now? There you go. Yes. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> what was it on when you couldn't see it? Um, so it just showed up as um, your just your PowerPoint. So I think you need to go ahead and play it. Um, yeah. So if you want to just, yeah. Um, can you make it full screen as well? Yes, you there you go. Screen? Yes, we can see it I now. I can only see it half screen. Okay. 
Um, I will go through it quickly again and just to point out the key things um, where we're located, central New York. Um, so we're right below Syracuse, right in the really in the center of New York. You can see on the map, and I'm sure you'll see this map a lot in this presentation tonight. Um, and then we're looking for four years of English and four years of history, and then three years of math, science, and foreign language. And there you can see our middle GPA is between an 86 and a 92. And then our cost, the future New Yorker is going to be what's important, that $7,500 a year, and that's automatic for any of our out-of-state students. And then in your junior and senior year, you receive an additional $2,000 per year if you remain a student on campus. These are all of our majors. We do have quite a few. We are a liberal arts school, so you can take classes um, outside of your major, in your major, and kind of build your class schedule around what you'd like to do in the future, which is pretty cool. You'll see we have a lot of teacher certification programs. We are one of the largest and most comprehensive teacher certification school in the state. Um, and then other things that are popular, sports management, sociology, uh, psychology, um, and then all of our sciences, we do have a pre-med and pre-law track. And then we have a lot of hands-on experience. We have our speech and hearing clinic, which is right on campus for anybody in the community to come. Um, any of our undergrad or graduate students can work in there and observe um, our kinesiology lab there as well, you can see. And then all of the different internship opportunities. We have a great partnership with the NFL, um, ABC Network. A lot of our students will do internships in New York City or in Washington, D.C., or of course in Disney World, um, which is pretty cool. And all of these are um, available to any of our students or our alumni, so you can definitely work at these places. After you're a student, they have over 80 clubs on campus, um, whether it be a major related or um, any extracurricular service. We have fraternities and sororities on campus, as well as any dance, music, uh, student-led newspaper, magazine, radio show. We have student-led podcasts that cover a variety of different things. Um, so there's always something to be involved with on campus. We are D3, so we do have the varsity level sports, club sports, and intramural sports. We have 131 national championships under our belt and continue to gain more each and every year. And our Student Life Center is a multi-million dollar project that just finished up in the past few years. Um, and this has all things weights. Uh, we have a cycling studio, we have a rock wall, we have an indoor lap pool, an indoor track, um, meditation room, yoga room, um, dance rooms, and all of our classes are led by our students on campus. And it is free to any of our current students, um, which is awesome and definitely something to take advantage of while you're a student on campus. And then here's my information now that you can see it. Um, I'm sorry about that. I didn't realize you couldn't see it. Um, and then my email and my cell phone number are there for you anytime that you need that. I am the representative for all of our Florida students, and I hope to hear from you soon. Great. Thank you so much. Um, great information. If there are any questions that you have, um, please feel free to use the Q&A button. And it's really helpful to also include, if you have a specific question, um, to include uh, the school or university you are referring to. Uh, so next, we'll pass it over to SUNY Maritime College. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. As I pull up the uh, PowerPoint for tonight, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Amira Khan. I am an undergraduate admissions counselor here at SUNY Maritime College. I am also an alum, so if you have any questions regarding student life, I will be gladly um, glad to help you answer those any questions that you may have. So first off, welcome and thank you for joining us tonight. So we are one of the SUNY schools as you have heard before. Um, Maritime is one of 64 campuses located within the SUNY system. We are one of the original um, 24 SUNY campuses and we are located in Bronx, New York in a neighborhood called Throgs Neck. We are located underneath the Throgs Neck Bridge, which leads right into Long Island, and we are actually approximately 30 minutes from downtown Manhattan. As you can see in this picture below, we have a 55 acre waterfront campus located um, right in between the East River and the Long Island Sound. So this is just a brief snapshot of Maritime by the Numbers. We are one of the smallest SUNY campuses, so we have approximately 1,800 students. 70% of our students are regimental students and 30% are civilian students, and I'll go into detail about those in just a little bit. We have 13 nationally recognized programs within science, business, engineering, and humanities, over 80 student clubs and organizations, 
13 NCAA Division III varsity sports and an average class size of 21. And along to go with that, a 15 to one student to teacher ratio. And that's great because the professors will not know you by number, they will actually know you by name and they will know how you're performing in their classes as well. So these are a list of all of our undergraduate academic programs. We have five ABET accredited engineering programs. This means that they have the highest accreditation that any engineering program can receive. For our Bachelor of Science programs, these include uh, three business programs within international transportation and trade, marine operations, and marine transportation. Marine environmental sciences are only science degree, and maritime studies is our only humanities degree. We do also offer two master's programs, one in international transportation and management, which is a business master's program, and then one in maritime and naval studies. Uh, that is our humanities master's program. Both of those are able to combine with our undergraduate degree and provide our students with a fast track option. So they can take up to nine to 10 credits as an undergraduate student um, and then have that apply for their master's degree afterwards. We also do have one associate's program in applied science in marine technology as well. So as I mentioned before, we do have the professional, we have the regiment of cadets as well as the civilian program. But before I go get into that difference, I just want to explain the different professional experience options our, our campus has to offer. So our students have the option of going one of three routes. They can go either in the deck license within the within the US Coast Guard, the engine license within the US Coast Guard or professional internship route. Um, now with the deck license options or the engine license options, these students are getting the experience to sail or work on a ship. With the deck license, the students focus on navigation and ship handling while the engine license students focus on working in the engine room as well. So it's a little bit different concentrations. For the professional experience, professional internship students, those students are merely um, not real necessarily looking for a job on the ship, but they want to work within the industry. Um, so in order to graduate, they have to complete an internship. Uh, so all of our students have to complete one of three tracks on campus. Now, you see the big circle in the middle with the regiment of cadets. This overlaps our civilian program and the US Coast Guard license option. Um, so I, if you are going for the deck license with the engine license, you must participate in the regiment of cadets because that simulates life on a ship. Um, while the on the other hand, the civilian students, they are not required to go on a ship, uh, but the students do have an option of participating in the regiment of cadets um, to get that life that regiment lifestyle to help them keep on track with their coursework. Now for the civilian students, on the other hand, they can be a traditional college student, wear whatever they want. They can go to class whenever they want. Um, but when we're talking about the regimental students, they do have to wear a uniform, wake up for more information and do other activities as well. These are all of our application requirements that we have for SUNY Maritime. We do accept the SUNY app or the Common app. So I tell students, if your guidance counselor is more comfortable using the Common app, use the Common app. But if you are applying to multiple SUNY schools, I suggest using the SUNY app. We require one essay, what your high school transcript, SAT or ACT scores, and one letter of recommendation. We do have the Bachelor of Engineering and then the Bachelor of Science requirements on the right hand side of your screen. And as you can see, it's a little bit higher for the Bachelor of Engineering students because it's a little bit more rigorous than our Bachelor of Science programs. And as you can see, the pre-calculus class is required for the students who are going to uh, enter under Bachelor of Engineering because we want them to keep on track with all of our coursework. For the Bachelor of Science students, it's not more so of a recommend of a requirement, but it's a recommendation that you have pre-calculus for at least your if you are going for the, at least the marine environmental science program, because that is also math intensive as well. And below is all of my contact information. You see the email. Um, you can also schedule a Zoom call with me as well as my phone number. Um, and then we are also active on Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. And then just a note, we do are offering virtual uh, tours as well as a bunch of different virtual open house series coming up within the next month. So if you're interested, feel free to check that out as well. Thank you and have a great evening. Great, thank you. Um, so I'll go ahead and show um, as well um, the order in which our presentations are happening. So where my mouse is right now, we're in session B4. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, pass it over to SUNY Stony Brook University. 
Hey guys, just gonna get my screen share going here. All right. So as I'm getting this started, uh, I'll introduce myself. My name is Rachel. I'm one of the out-of-state admissions counselors here at Stony Brook University. So if you're not familiar, um, we are located in Long Island, New York, and we are another one of the SUNY schools. So we're one of 64. Uh, Stony Brook is actually known as one of the uh, flagship universities of SUNY. So we are very proud of that. Um, we definitely pride ourselves in our location. Uh, and it's kind of funny that Maritime went before us. So we're a little bit more east of them. We're actually on Long Island. Um, so we're smack in the middle. We're about 60 miles um, east of the city, as I mentioned. And then another 60 miles east of us is Montauk, which is the most eastern end of Long Island. Um, and as you can see from the picture here, we're pretty much surrounded by water. The closest beach to us is about 10 minutes. Um, so that's something that I think draws a lot of students in um, is our location. But just surrounding us, we're in a more suburban area. We are a large size public research institution with just over 18,000 undergraduate students currently and just over 26,000 total students at this time. At Stony Brook, we have more than 200 academic programs available to you. So there's a lot of ways where you can kind of, if you have more than one interest that you wanna pursue, there's a lot of ways to do that at Stony Brook. Most of our students will at least major and minor, but we do get a good majority of students who will double major and minor. So our students do like to challenge themselves academically. Um, so they fall, all of our programs fall into these colleges and schools. Um, the School of Journalism is unique to us in that we're the only school out of the SUNY system that offers this program. So we're very proud to have that and having access so close to the city opens up a lot of doors for these students as well. We also have our School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences, which has basically its own campus located in Southampton, which is a little bit further east. And that's actually pictured here on this slide. So at Stony Brook, we do have quite a few fun traditions that also go on on campus. Um, so you can have some fun outside of the classroom as well. Uh, this includes our Roth Pond Regatta. This is probably our most deeply seated tradition at Stony Brook. So students are given duct tape, cardboard, and paint, and they have to create these boats, as you see pictured in the upper left-hand corner here, and get them across our Roth Pond, which is in our Roth Quad on campus. Uh, and everyone comes out for the event. Our School of Journalism actually covers it live, so it's a really fun day. Our Stony Brook concerts, which are typically offered in the fall to welcome new students. Um, we've had some large names like Post Malone most recently, so, um, and many other names. Um, so that's always a fun event to kind of welcome you all to campus. Then of course we have our homecoming. We do have division one athletics. We have 18 total teams, including men's and women's. Uh, so our homecoming event is pictured here. It's a great way to come out, represent your sea wolves, wear your red. And then we also have an event called Earthstock, which celebrates being an environmentally friendly campus. This typically happens in the spring. So there's flowers, there's uh, food vendors. It's just another really fun event. And this is just a few examples of things that we do for fun at Stony Brook. As far as our freshman applicant application process goes, so our first year applicant deadline is February 1st. Uh, decision notifications for freshmen go out by April 1st. And then May 1st is the national deposit deadline, pretty much regardless of where you're going. So at Stony Brook, you would be a Seawolf. The application process itself includes applying online. So we accept the common application, the SUNY application, and the coalition application. So whatever is easiest for you. Uh, typically, I would recommend common application as a freshman so that if you're applying to multiple schools, you can do it all in one place. We require your official transcripts to be sent. Test scores, uh, as I know we've already mentioned, SUNY hasn't really decided um, if we're going to continue to be test optional. Right now we are through spring 2021. So we'll see what happens with that moving forward. And then the only supplement that we require at Stony Brook is a uh, letter of recommendation in addition to the materials um, that I mentioned. Uh, and if you do decide to submit your test scores either from SAT or ACT, they do have to be sent officially. So to give you a brief breakdown so you guys can just take a look at this, I won't go into all of the details, but this is our most recent class profile. Uh, SAT scores fall um, 
and this is our middle 50th percentile. So fall between a 1240 and a 1420. ACT scores fell between a 26 to 32. And then high school GPA was a 3.7 or higher if you're on the four point scale. And then a, a 92 or higher if you're on the 100 point scale. So um, typically we see about 25% students coming from out of state and internationally. So uh, COVID I think definitely affected this for us this year. Uh, so we're hoping to increase that. Hopefully we'll be back to normal in the fall for you guys to come in. Um, so yeah, we're hopeful on that. And then briefly, I see my time is coming to an end. So this is the total cost uh, for an out-of-state student. So you're looking at just over 42,000. We do have merit-based scholarships available to students as well as financial aid. About 79% of our students qualify for that. So that is an option to help you finance. Um, and this is my information. I know that was a very brief overview of what we have to offer. So you can always contact me. We do have um, chatting with our current students. So you can definitely visit that link there um, and chat with someone who's in the shoes that you're potentially going to be in in the future. And then we have our general contact information there on the right hand side. We have calling, texting and email. And then we're on uh, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Stony Brook U. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, very great information. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, just a reminder, if you have any questions at all, please um, feel free to submit them through the Q&A um, button. Uh, representatives are here to uh, answer all your questions. They're here, they're available. Um, so feel free to submit your questions there. Um, and if any um, representatives want to share your information through the chat, um, I know attendees find that very, very helpful. So um, feel free to do that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and pass it over to SUNY Binghamton University. Thank you very much. All right, folks, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, I'm going to start off with some introductions here for myself as well. My name is Byron Gittens. I do work here at Binghamton. I've been at Binghamton now roughly for about a little over a year. Um, I'm very much used to working in a lot of the number one public uh, universities. Prior to being at Binghamton, I was at the University of Maryland, College Park. Um, and before that, I was at UConn recruiting students internationally. So used to working at a lot of these big number one publics. The difference with Binghamton is it's a medium sized uh, state school. There are 64 SUNY, SUNY schools and Binghamton ranks as number one for the publics. Um, when we talk about what to expect at Binghamton, there's a lot of things that we're gonna definitely impact your life with. I will tell you there's six colleges and schools on campus. So students are coming here for honors. They're coming here for engineering. They're coming here for pharmacy. They're coming here for nursing. They're coming here for a variety of different things. There are 130 academic course offerings here at the university. A lot of research opportunities. One of the unique programs we have is the freshman research immersion program, which there are only four of those in the nation. Uh, there's 10 research streams and you do get to do research with some top professors. Dr. Stanley Whittingham is one. He won a Nobel Prize for the invention of the ion lithium battery, which thankfully we have these devices that we can have these events um, you know, with you virtually. So that's a good thing as well. Binghamton does have over 450 clubs and organizations at the university. We are a D1 institution. Most of the students that we're getting are the type of students that would apply to UF if they're staying in Florida. So we're looking at students with 90s, mostly on their transcript, maybe a few 80s, A's and B's, rigor, IB, AB, uh, A, uh, P courses, honors courses, college level work, and things of that nature. So these are the type of students we're getting. We are test optional this year, so certainly that's not something we're looking at. But usually when the students do have SAT scores as they would have had in 2019, we're looking at you know a 1300 to 1450 at that middle 50%. I wanna give you a little feel of the university as well.
So that gives you an idea. We're about three hours northwest of New York City. Uh, Binghamton is around a lot of the major metropolitan cities within a five hour drive, so you can kind of see. Um, out of state, we like to say we have a very low cost of attendance. So a student coming from Florida or anywhere else, if they're looking at the cost of attendance, it's roughly about $44,433, housing, meals, tuition, fees. Um, students, we do reserve a lot of the out of state scholarships for um, students from out of state. I mean, there's not a lot of monies that we do give in state because they do have a lower cost of attendance. So a lot of the monies and scholarships that we do give will go to out of state students. We also do have, just so you're aware, uh, different applications that one, some of my colleagues may have mentioned some of that. Um, we're on the coalition, we're on the SUNY application, which is mostly for if you're applying in state, we are on the common app mostly for most students that are applying to multiple institutions. Uh, we do get about 40,000 applications for 3,000 seats. So again, very competitive, but we are looking for students like you. So definitely reach out any questions or concerns and do feel free to visit our website. Awesome, thank you. Um, great, great things that are happening around um, in these colleges and universities. So if you have questions, again, um, feel free to submit those through the Q&A button. Um, they are, uh, everyone is here and um, want to be um, a big support for you during this process. So um, we have two schools left. And so without further ado, I will pass it over to Marist College. Great, thanks, Catherine. All right, so good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Doyle. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Admission at Marist College. And Marist College is located in the Hudson River Valley. We are about an hour and a half north of New York City, and the campus sits right on the banks of the Hudson River. It's considered one of the nation's top 50 most beautiful campuses. And we have a lot of incredible opportunities in our location. Uh, quick access into New York City, less than a mile from campus, is the Metro North and Amtrak trains, which you can hop on your, to get into New York City. You can also go up to our state's capital in Albany uh, and head all the way up to Montreal if you wanted to do that. In terms of our campus, we have just over 5,000 undergraduate students. So Marist is considered right between a small and medium-sized private college uh, or university. So it's definitely the type of campus where you will have a core group of friends, your faculty will definitely know you, you'll know a lot of the staff and administrators on campus, but you'll never know everyone. So you won't feel like you know everything about everybody on campus, um, which may be kind of similar in high school where you kind of feel like you know everybody and you wanna break out and branch out. Um, Marist is that kind of nice fit where you're constantly meeting new people, but you still have your core group of friends and recognition from your faculty and assistance from them as needed. Uh, there are over 40 majors, but there's over 90 academic programs between majors, minors, and areas of concentration within specific major programs. There are very fluid academic boundaries at the college. So we recognize a lot of students coming out of high school have things that they're interested in, but they're not necessarily 100% sure that's what they want to study all four years. And so about a third of our students enter the college as undeclared students and then decide by the second semester of their sophomore year. So that academic um, flexibility is there throughout your time at the college. And we find that the majority of our students, over 70%, have a major and a minor in a disparate school or multiple minors in disparate schools. And for us, that's very important because we believe in an approach that graduates students who are very well-rounded and informed and can see things from multiple perspectives. There are graduate programs offered at the college, so you can complete a master's degree in one additional year. Those are considered four plus one programs. There are a number of opportunities for that. And uh, unlike many of the SUNY schools, the majority of our students actually come from out of state. So at Marist, you're going to find that almost every state in the country is represented in the student body. And more than half of our undergraduate students come from states outside of New York. So for Florida, for example, we typically have between 40 and 50 undergraduate freshmen joining us every fall coming from the state of Florida. So you know, you'll definitely be here with people who are from areas close to home, but you're not gonna be surrounded by 
um, people who are only from Florida or people who are only from New York. You're gonna meet people from Texas and Minnesota and California and other states, as well as from 64 other countries around the world. So part of our mission at the college is to provide you a global perspective and cultural fluency. And so one of the ways that we're able to accomplish that in our mission is by surrounding you with people who are from places you've never been or maybe have been but aren't as familiar with. So your classes, the biggest one you'll ever have at the college is 35 students. You know, your average will be 24. So probably similar to what you're used to now only on a, on a bigger scale. We are absolutely a residential college. And again, with students from almost every state in the country and 64 countries around the world, they're looking for that kind of experience. So almost all of our freshmen, 96%, live on campus and then over 75% of all of our undergraduates live on campus all four years. Uh, we have one of the highest graduation rates and highest placement rates in the country. So, you know, typically at commencement over 65% of our students have been placed at that point, either into graduate school or into the workforce. And you can see compared to the national average, it's significantly higher than both uh, public and private colleges and universities. And then the graduation rate significantly higher there as well in terms of public and private colleges and universities around the country. So lots of different areas to study. The important thing to note here is that you're not locked into one thing or one school. So of the six different schools at the college, if you come in as business, but you find you later have an interest in studio art or digital media or cybersecurity, all you have to do is work with your advisor to sign up for those classes. You don't have to transfer within the college to a different school. You don't necessarily have to change your major. You can take some of those courses and then decide if you'd like to pursue a minor in that area or possibly double major, or if you decide to change your major. But that is something that you have a lot of flexibility with and a lot of students take advantage of that at the college. I would say it's really a hallmark of the experience. One of the other things that is incredibly important to our faculty is experiential opportunities. So we are ranked in the top 50 colleges and universities in the country for offering students the ability to go beyond the walls of the classroom and expand their knowledge base. So whether that's working in control rooms that are set up just like those at ESPN or NBC Nightly News, or getting out and doing environmental science work in the forests and mountains around the college or just north of the college. Um, it is incredibly important to us to make sure that our students not only have the theory and understanding, but also have um, the ability to understand how that theory is applied in the real world. So our faculty are very focused on that. We're also really committed to ensuring students have a lot of fun, get to meet other people and get to branch out beyond academics. So as a division one athletic school, we have 23 different division one teams and we have you know, over a hundred clubs and organizations that students are involved in, including big music, and big theater programs at the college. Deadlines for admission are, are far off for you if you're a junior, um, but just to give you a sense of our admitted student profile, um, this is our middle 50% of students who were admitted to the college uh, last year. So we don't have the final numbers for this year, uh, but for last year. So you can see um, that we are test optional. And I always like to say it didn't take a pandemic for us to get there. We've actually been test optional for almost 11 years. We decided to go test optional over a decade ago because we were seeing a lot of students who are very talented and academically we thought could do well at the college were being limited in their ability to come to Marist because they didn't perform well on a Saturday morning taking the ACT or SAT and our faculty agreed. And what we found is that those students who are now coming to the college are performing incredibly well. Some have even graduated as the college valedictorian. And then in terms of visiting, you know, there's lots of options for that. We do have in-person visits. So uh, even, you know, despite the pandemic, the college did resume on-campus visits back in July. And we've hosted almost 10,000 people on campus since uh, July through the end of last week. So you can actually visit campus. You just have to follow New York's guidelines to do that. And then we have lots of virtual programs like everybody else. And then if you're interested in coming to campus, but you're not that comfortable interacting with people yet, that's totally fine. We have lots of self-guided options for you and you can sign up for any of those at the link below. This is my contact information. So as an alum of Marist, um, I hope this has been helpful for you. And as the director of the undergraduate admission office, 
If you have any questions at all about Marist or you'd like to connect with a current student, faculty member, or a member of the staff, uh, please reach out to me and let me know. I'll be more than happy to connect you with anyone you'd like to speak with. Thank you so much. Um, we will certainly um, pass it over to Pace University in New York. They are uh, certainly last but not least. So Pace University in New York. Thank you so much. So hi, everybody. My name is Juanita. I'm one of the admission counselors at Pace University. I'm also an alumna of the university and I'm also a current graduate student. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'm kind of the full package uh, all around right now. Um, so one of the really great things about PACE is that we, too, we do have two strategic New York locations. So we have a, a location in downtown Manhattan. We are about a, about a five, 10 minute walk from Wall Street. It's definitely prime real estate for all of our students, especially our business students, because we are about a five, 10 minute walk from Wall Street. Um, but aside from that, pretty much every single subway line does stop um, about a block or two away from one of our PACE buildings. So definitely easy access to everything that the city has to offer. Uh, we do have a four dormitories on this campus, two freshman dorms and two upperclassmen dorms and about 73% of our students that do house with us on campus. In addition to that, this particular campus is home to about 6,000 undergraduate students. Uh, so we do have a nice amount of students uh, on, our, on our New York campus, but across both of our campuses, our average class size is about 20. So we do like to keep them nice and small. In complete contrast to our concrete jungle, we do have our Westchester campus. So located about 45 minutes north of our New York City campus. This is our more traditional college campus, green grass, trees, real birds to chirp, not pigeons like we have in the city, completely opposite, right? So this is the campus for somebody that would like to still have that traditional college experience, but be close to the city, have easy access. We have shuttles that go between the two campuses several times during the day. Um, so you do have access to that free shuttle or you have access via the Metro North, which is our train system. So we do have those options for you. This particular campus is home to about 3,000 undergraduate students. We have two freshman dorms and four upperclassmen dorms on this campus. Um, and then we do have environmental center and then all of our division two athletics located up on this particular campus. Um, one of the unique things about PACE is that we do offer um, something we call the PACE Path. And so what is this PACE Path, you ask? It's this four-year customized plan that takes it, uh, in play all of the things that you see on the screen. So our strong academics, our dedicated mentors and advisors, and our career building internships. So freshman year in your University 101 class, you create this four-year customized plan, and it's essentially your roadmaps get you from your point A, which is going to be freshman year, your point B, your dream job, graduation, and where you want to be when you reach that. So is it going to be having a major and a minor or double majoring? Is it going to be doing one of our accelerated combined degree programs? Is it going to be doing two, three, five, ten 10 internships? All of that fun stuff. So it's really a roadmap for you to kind of see what you need to do to get you where you want to be by the time you leave PACE. Uh, so that first really big important part of the PACE path is the academics at PACE. So we do have um, over 150 majors and accelerated combined degree programs through our six different schools of study listed on the screen. As I mentioned, our average class size is about 20 and we have a 16 to one student faculty ratio. So they do like to keep the class sizes small. They wanna make sure that you are getting that one-on-one -on -one attention from the professors. So you are kind of not just a number in a lecture hall, but you are a name and a person in that particular classroom. Uh, that other big pillar that's part of our PACE path is making sure that we're getting you out there and getting your hands dirty, making sure we're getting you the experience that you need to get the job that you want by the time that you graduate. So we do have our one-on-one -on -one counseling with our career services advisors. So um, even before you're even allowed onto our career services system, you do have to do a resume writing workshop and an interview skills workshop so you're prepared. So you get that call back for the interview and you kill the interview and you get the internship that you want. Um, we do have several career 
career and internship fairs um, a year. So we have two on each campus um, a year. And then we do have smaller spotlight events, which are um, maybe like one or two, maybe sometimes five companies that are geared towards a particular major, whether it's criminal justice or computer science, something like that. Um, and then these employers are seeking those particular students. Um, so we do have really great opportunities and being that we are close to the city and um, in the city, it does allow our students some really great opportunities. So you can see on the screen, two of our tour guides um, were able to have fantastic uh, internships, late show with Stephen Colvey, Colvey at the top and then uh, SNL at the bottom. Um, so PACE education does cost less than you think. So all of our admitted students do receive a merit-based scholarship. It is based off of your GPA and your SAT if you submit those to us, or if you apply a test optional, just your GPA. That scholarship is yours for all four years, as long as you maintain full-time status, whatever GPA is associated to it. And plus, we always um, encourage you to fill out that FAFSA. It is so important to make sure that we are getting you that additional federal funding as well. As far as the application goes, so we are looking at uh, either the Common App or the PACE application. Your high school transcript, we are test optional, but you are welcome to submit your SAT or ACT scores, your two letters of recommendation, and your personal statement. And then last but not least, we do have our important deadlines. We have early decision, which is the binding, early action, which is the non-binding, and we do have two. That just means you're going to get a decision earlier from us uh, than you would our regular decision. And then our School of Performing Arts is December 15th. This doesn't change. It's super important. If you miss that deadline, you will not be allowed to audition. Um, and then our regular decision and our nursing deadlines are February 15th. And then last but not least, here's the contact information for our undergraduate um, admissions office in the New York City and the Westchester campus. But I am your admission counselor. So feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you do have. There goes my time. Um, and as well as our financial aid office. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, as we uh, close out, I want to just thank everyone for joining us this evening. Um, we do have a quick survey. So when we close your window, um, there will be a very quick four question survey that will appear. Um, feel free to please submit um, to fill that out for us. Your feedback is really helpful to us and it helps us to figure out how we can make our sessions better. Um, there are more sessions um, happening. So if you are interested, um, feel free to register for more sessions that are happening. And then lastly, uh, this recording will be available a week from today. So if you missed anything or wanna go back, um, this recording will be available. Um, as we close out, if you have any questions at all, please use the Q&A button. Um, our representatives are here and we appreciate all of you and thank you for your time. Catherine, I just want to say thank you for setting this yes. up. Great job. Thank you very much. Of course, no problem. Thanks.